Hello everyone, welcome again to your channel. Thanks for the click, I hope you are doing well. So as you can see, today we are going to talk about teaching reading. And as you know, we have already talked about teaching reading in other in previous occasions. Today, in this episode, we are going to discuss and talk about teaching and reading in terms of different aspects. We are going to see the approaches of teaching and reading and to talk about some ways very quickly, some ways that we can use to talk to teach reading and whether students have to read silently or loudly because this is a kind of controversy and it is a problem for so many novice teachers. We are going to talk about some skills that we have to highlight and we have to focus on in the teaching of reading. Now, when we talk about the approaches of teaching reading, we have three general approaches as you can see. We have the bottom app and we have the top down and the interactive approach. So when we talk about reading, reading there is a text and a text is a kind of paragraphs, kind of sentences, words, etc. Not all of this, it is also related to a certain topic. So it, there, is, there is always a topic. So a text, every text revolves around a certain topic. So when we talk about reading, we have a text, we have language, we have words, we have sentences, and we have a topic that the text revolves around. Now, when we talk about these approaches, the aim of these approaches is to help students reach the meaning or the understanding of the text. Now, when we talk about the bottom app, the bottom app approach, always starting from the scratch. And when we talk about starting from the scratch, which means starting from what we call the smallest unit, okay? The smallest unit of what? very simply of a language. And when we talk about the smallest unit of a language, we talk about sound, we talk, we talk about letters, we talk about words, and then phrases, and then sentences. So, according to this approach, to help student or to lead student to the understanding of the text, which means to start from scratch, start from teaching them sounds, teaching them letters, teaching them words, teaching them ver phrases, sentences, so as to help them reach the understanding of the text. And when we talk about these kind of, starting from the smallest unit, tell, for example, the meaning, we are talking about the text. So we are going to teach them, for example, words from the text, sentences from the text, uh, expressions from the text. Why all this? To help them reach the meaning the understanding of the text, the comprehension of the text, because this is the ultimate goal of reading comprehension. So, this is what we mean by the bottom app. So, bottom app is always starting from the smallest unit of the text to reach the understanding, the comprehension of the text. Now, when we talk about the top down, it's the opposite. So, we always start from the top. We start from the knowledge the cultural background of students. So we always start from the top. So we start, to we start from the knowledge, the background knowledge, the cultural background of students about the text. For example, if you are teaching a text about artificial intelligence, for sure, you are going to start with the background, with the cultural background or the, the background knowledge about students about artificial intelligence, whether they know some AI tools and how they can use them for learning for any other domains, etc. So this is what we mean by to start from the background knowledge, the cultural background, what students know about the topic in general of the text. Why? All this is to help them understand the text. So this is from the very beginning, from scratch, and this one is from the top. Now, what is the interactive approach is all about. Now, the interactive approach is all about combining, let's say, combining what? The two. Okay? Combining the two. And when I say combining the two, which means to combine the bottom app and the top down. And this is what we usually do in classes. So, we usually start from what we call pre-teaching some words, pre-teaching some vocabulary. This is in pre-reading phase for sure. And then we talk about the what students know to anticipate, to predict what students know about 
the topic of the text, and then we go to the reading comprehension. So this is a kind of combination. So what we do in our classes is the interactive. We start by pre-teaching vocabulary, pre-teaching some expressions to equip students with some we can say linguistic competence to understand the text. Not only this, we can also ask them about what they know about the topic or to anticipate, to predict that what the text is about. To ask them about their, we can say, background knowledge of the topic related to the text. So this is what we mean by the interactive approach. So interactive approach combining the two approaches, top-down and the bottom-up. So very easy. Now let's talk about the ways of teaching. So when we talk about ways of teaching and reading, this is something that we talked about before. So we can talk about different frameworks like, for instance, the Jackson reading, reciprocal teaching. We can also talk about that kind of uh, pre and while and post. This is a kind of uh, way to teach reading. We can also talk about the SQ4R and this is what we are going to talk about later. So these are kind of ways to teach the reading comprehension, okay? Now let's talk about whether students have to read the text silently or loudly. This is a kind of controversy and so many teachers find it, um, we can say, problematic, especially the uh, novice teachers. Now to answer this question, it's very simply, we have to go to the real life. In our real life, what are the cases or situations in which we read loudly or read silently? Usually, uh, in our, when we are reading for pleasure, we read silently. So most of the time in our daily life, we read silently. We have one case, or maybe, let's say, two cases. One is academic. One case in which we read loudly. What is it? Very simply, is when we are reading a text to someone who does not have the text we are reading. So in this case, we read loudly, so as that person who is listening to us can understand or know what we are reading. So loudly, reading loudly, is this is the only case in which we read loudly. We have another case which is academic, which is when we are reading from slates, from when we are delivering a presentation, for example, and reading from slates. Okay, so you launch a slate and you read from slates to the public. So that's a kind of reading loudly. So this is academic. But generally speaking, in our daily life, we read silently. So in the classroom teaching, when teaching reading, we have to, uh, we can say, emphasize this, reading silently. Sometimes you can ask students to read loudly, but for a different purpose. For example, you may ask him to come to the front of student and read the text, read the paragraph or read that part of the text or part of the paragraph. And this will help them to develop a kind of, we can say, presentation or public speaking skills, okay, presentation skills. So you can use this reading aloud to help students develop these kind of presentation skills. So from time to time, you can ask two students or three students or four students to read the text, each read a part in front of students, the other ones listening, and you can from time to time help them, give them some kind of skills needed in reading, in, uh, we can say, delivering presentations like eye contact, gestures, movement, etc. So, this is how we can use or we can teach reading loudly. To use this to help students develop the presentation skills. Otherwise, teaching it silently, silently. Students need to read silently, all right? Now, why, why do you think we need, we focus on reading silently? Very simply because the focus, the focus of a reading comprehension lesson is on the skills. So we always intend to develop some skills for students while reading. So we have a lot of reading skills for students to develop. For example, uh, scheming, scanning, making inferences, making connections, answering questions, references, and so on. So we have a lot of skills that uh, we have to help students develop, all right? Not pronunciation, not any other thing, right? So silently is much better for developing skills. 
loudly as I said, you can ask students to read loudly in front of the others for what? For one skill, which is the presentation skills. If you want your student to develop these skills, and for sure, they will like it a lot and they will need it in future, presentation skills, okay? So reading in front of the others will help them to develop the reading or the presentation skills. So this is all about the reading lesson today. So we have approaches, we have some ways and that we talked about, we are going to talk about skew 4 r and silently or loudly so we always have students read silently for developing some skills like as i said before answering questions making refer inferences references making connections and loudly you can use it if you want your student to develop the presentation skills that's a good technique you can use to help your student develop the presentation skills anyway so um if you have any question or suggestion related to this lesson don't hesitate to let me know see you in another episode with another lesson have a good time and goodbye